you well, will not problem. stop, you, you will not eat, you will not sleep, you will lose your mind. It's like, wait, what in the greatest showman crossover with Les Miserables, crossover with Grease, crossover with La Bamba, crossover with the sound of music? Are we in? You see how long this video is? Can I see the timeline? And you see that I'm done and I've dispensed with the good. And so the rest of it. Okay. Welcome. Today we're reviewing Obaram, a 2022 musical drama currently streaming on Netflix after a cinema run. This movie has a 100 minute runtime. It's a collaboration between Film Tribe, Singularity Media, and Film One Entertainment. I understand uh, Obaram means my blood in the Igbo language. Now let's quickly look at the synopsis of this movie. Confronted by her past, a promising musician, Oluchi, tries to reconcile with the daughter she abandoned, but some things cannot be forgiven. This movie is written by Stephen Okonkwo. It's produced and directed by the really, really creative Kayode Kasum, who has to his credit titles such as Far From Home, This Lady Called Life, Sugar Rush, MT, uh, TV shows like Castle and Castle, MTV Sugar, and Africa Magic's Unbroken, and Rihanna, as well as a host of others, both movies and TV shows. Now, to the main players of this movie, aka the cast, we have Oluchi that was played by Nancy Isime, and guys, I got to see her designer booty. Is this objectifying? nah it's appreciation okay she looks really really phenomenal um we have humphrey played by our own beloved nkem owa humphrey aka papa oluchi we have the little girl ihunaya played by dara simi nadi and what a beautiful talented child she is we have fidelis played by everyone's boo deemi okalawa and then fidelis's wife gloria played by florence okechuku who is one of the much uh, loved pair on tinsel we have bishop played by my main squeeze my main crush <laughs> william benson i love that man and he's like really super versatile we have auntie wakai go played by the one and only onyeka owenu whom they reigned with the auto tune but whatever we have teacher pious played by preach bassi emeka played by bolanle nino lowo and it's always good to see him although i'm not so sure if his role in this particular movie was really necessary but that's neither here nor that we have charity played by bolaji ogun ogumola and then there's uh, other mem other people like the members of the band rough coins played by buchi comedian oj ade lead played by okore kingsley of the caveman caveman we have e piano played by angelo anosike angelo 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 okay we have t clef played by sydney talker sydney Aguirre. yeah these musicians their names and you know there's a host of other people but we can't run through all the names and now on to the summary uh of this uh film when once the movie started rolling and we got to that opening sequence and then we got to Nancy singing. I was like, wait, what in the greatest showman crossover with Les Miserables, crossover with Grease, crossover with La Bamba, crossover with the sound of music? Are we in? What is this film? You know, but I, I I quickly settled into what it was. I mean, being a musical was like the selling point of this film. So I cannot pretend that I was taken entirely by surprise. Now, uh, as stated in the summary, this movie, this film follows the story of a young musician who abandons her child to pursue her own life and career. Now, I would have said, spoiler alert, but that the fact that this girl is her daughter was already given away in the synopsis. So there's no spoiler to be had anyway this young woman musician life happens at some point and the child she had abandoned comes back into her life and there begins the address journey of uh, reconnection and reconciliation between mother and child now to what worked I think the acting was okay 
across the board. Nancy Sime, she played her role very well. Uh, she really interpreted the role of an unscrupulous, hot-headed, scatterbrain. I think this is probably one of the best uh, showings I've, I've had of Nancy Sime. Dara Sime, this child was lovely. She really played this role as a super smart, supremely confident and self-aware child. Her character was uh, established early in the beginning as someone who really values honesty. In that whole sequence between uh, her father trying to run away, uh, uh, trying to escape uh, or dodging paying school fees and the way she questioned him uh, or how she came told the truth and then so that when later she started to uh, query her mother's character it did not come out of nowhere it had been established that she's a, she's a person who really uh, values honesty the acting by Onye Kanwenu was really good I expected to see more singing from her I mean you hear musical you hear Onye Kanwenu you can't have certain expectations so in that way I was disappointed I don't know what that auto tune was but it is what it is that's what we're given it was done well the sweetness of uh, a substitute father just trying to create a world where a young girl can grow up with confidence I, I think that that was done very well costume was fine makeup was fine that department was fine especially Ihunaya. that's her name her hair was always so very well done and always so beautiful the score of this movie was also really good I enjoyed I, I said the score We'll get to the music, but I said the score. All right. Cinematography was mostly okay. The establishing shots uh, for Lagos and Enugu, I appreciate that they took the time to do that, to situate us wherever they were in story. I'm not 100% sold that Enugu was actually Enugu, but you know, at least they told us this is where you are in story. Uh, I really liked the aerial shots. There were quite a few of them and those were well done as well. A final thing that really worked was the relationship between Oluchi and Ihunaya. Whenever uh, women have girls, young girls, young women have children very early and then especially when the children call them sister or auntie, there's a certain dynamic between them and I think that that dynamic was captured very well in the relationship between Oluchi and Ihunaya. Now, do you see how long this video is? You can see the timeline and you see that I'm done, I've, I've dispensed with the good. And so the rest of it, okay. Well, now before we get to what did not work, I don't know why we saw Fidelis in the opening sequence. I wasn't sure when I saw him in the end as Oluchi's biological father, sorry, Ihunaya's biological father, I wasn't sure why did I see him in the beginning? Were they trying to say that he's been stalking uh, Oluchi or did he just happen to be there that day and saw that she was performing and then he got disgusted by oh my god this person I thought I was rid of you for the rest of my life and I'll never see you again I couldn't really interpret what that was I had a question about I, honestly this point should probably fall under what did not work under story but I wasn't sure why Oluchi went to the funeral because she clearly did not care much about her dad and then she knew that she had a child and she would have to reckon with that so the fact that she went to the funeral but before she went we didn't really see any conflict about the confrontation that was going to happen and all the can the kind of worms that was definitely going to be kicked open i didn't see any of that and that that confused me now the accusations that the child ihunaya hurled at oluchi she said liar okay thief okay but then she said prostitute and i was like is there something i'm missing you know i don't know i don't know where that came from i don't know it, maybe there was something you could tell me in the comment section if there was that color or tinge to her character that i missed but i didn't see that Whew, and now <laughs> to what did not work which is my least favorite part i i don't like to I don't think of it as tearing a film apart. I think that's why we're here to, you know, offer critique. Let's start with the characterization. I did not believe Oluchi as a musician. It, just the portrayal of her as a musician, it's only when she was singing, but in her day-to-day -day life, that was not believable. I had a question as to what did Oluchi care about? She did not care about music, as I've already said. I don't. I didn't get a vibe that she cared about music. 
per se. I didn't get the sense that she, she didn't care about family. And so that leaves me with money. Now, if she cared about money, then her body was a liability. And what I mean by that, <laughs> sorry, what I mean by that is she has a certain aesthetic, right? And also she's beautiful in face. And then she also has smarts. She's clearly street smart. She's clearly shown that she's okay with trading up for financial security for money. And so if that's the case, then the, why I say her body is a liability is that having that body and those looks and all of that and her character, her smart, her street ruggedness, the way she is, it was, and then her profession as a musician, I'm sorry, she fits like the prototype of somebody who we, we, would uh, easily find a man to, I want to relax and be taken care of, you know? So to try to then convince me that she was living in that hovel and just hustling when she has shown that clearly she is okay with like using what she has to get what she wants or what she needs, that did not track for me. Something that really bothered me in this film was the adultification of Ihunaya. That's not something I ever like to see, not on screen and not in real life. The songs that the child was singing, sometimes they were just like way too mature. I didn't like it. So like this line, closer than my sister, more like a lover, I was like, Huh? And then I'm not sure why they decided to ruin Humphrey's character by having him perpetrate violence on Oluchi. I know that we deal with those things carelessly in Nigeria. It's not things that we really think we need to comment on. That kind of casual violence, but it bothers me. And to me, this was a great character up until that point. I was like, oh, you're a vicious man. You're a bully. You're, you know, like it's never okay to beat another person like that. And definitely not a woman. So that did something to the character that I did not like and it was so unnecessary. Now to the story which includes the plot, the structure and the actual script itself. Oluchi did not grieve uh, the fact that she did not make up with her dad. If you're fighting with someone or not talking to them or ignoring them or whatever it is and they die, you would have a lot of regret in that regard. And the fact that she did not uh, grieve that, it raised a lot of questions and that made me wonder about the context of their relationship. There was no like actual backstory given to us about what their relationship was like prior to her getting pregnant and all that transpired afterwards. Um, in the now they were taking this child to a nightclub to perform right and then we had the patron freaking out about alcohol and child labor and all of that and i was like look let's be for fucking real let's stop telling hollywood stories in nollywood that sh <clears throat> pisses me off right like this is that this is a country where we, we don't have that kind of relationship with children and alcohol as a system. We do. If you want to comment on it as something that should be, you could comment on it in that way, but don't say it as though it's out. It's unusual. It's out of the norm. It's not out of the norm. Nobody cares what age you're drinking. It's not something we comment about in Nigeria. So that did not seem believable to me. And then, um, also child labor, their kids selling gala in traffic. Come on now, you know, just stop. And then the, then later sh they're freaking out. These other guys, the band guys are freaking out about her talking to a man or a man talking to her. And I'm like, you guys brought her to perform in a nightclub. And then you're freaking out about a man talking to her, right? There's that. And then the fact that, um, she wandered off away. She had no protections. Nobody was even really looking out for her, you know, just, I don't know that whole thing in that part of the story was crazy. Now the beginning of Oluchi's redemption arc was really, really bungled and mismanaged to begin her redemption arc in this story began with when the child ran away and went back to Enugu right if that's the case then how is it that it took her that long if you if the your your reawakening your moment you know of 
coming back to yourself and be like, what kind of life have I lived? If it's when you realize your child is missing, you will not stop. You will not eat. You will not sleep. You will lose your mind until you find this child. We didn't see that. All we know was her coming and telling Bishop she's missing and then him grabbing his shirt and saying, let's go or whatever, look for her. We didn't, nothing again until when she shows up in Enugu, no idea of how much later this was but it was time enough for wow Ihunaya was busy she got herself into boarding school she wrote an entrance exam she did she that she that i'm like so you're just showing up now i don't understand so if that was the beginning of her redemption act then they already mismanaged it right from jump and that was problematic when i saw dme again in this kind of this is not exactly a bad actually it's more like a funny slash weird when i saw him in this setup i just the last movie i watched and reviewed was sister so you already know where i'm going with this it was just weird for me it was felt like deja vu now as to his character that fidel is saying that he could not accept ihunaya first of all it was a crazy narrative choice in the sense that we they show oh when he was looking at her when she was the way she talked her smart uh smart allegedness her smart mouthedness just the way that child carries on the way he was looking at her it was like he wanted to eat her up in a pg way okay like he was falling in love with that child like how am I so blessed? How is this my child? Did I make this? That was the vibe, the look on his face when he was looking at her. Please tell me how after that, him saying, I can't accept you. The reason he gave, by the way, was that it would disrupt his family. That was a BS reason because who was pushing him from the moment that conversation could have ended when Oluchi showed up and said, we have a child together. And he's like, Hey, I want none of that. Get the hell out of my house. That's where that would have ended. Guess who kept him calm enough to hear her out? His wife. So which family again, what was, uh, Ihunaya going to dis disrupt by coming in? <clears throat> when his own wife was the one that kept him there to hear this person out and almost like sort of facilitated that. So it made no sense. It made no sense. And then to make matters worse, he said all of that to a child. He literally looked a child, a 10 year old in the face and told her, I cannot bring you into my family. I, I don't want you. Do you know what kind of coldness that I'm sorry. Do you know what kind of trauma? that is for a lifetime so i was like you know what this guy is a bastard and maybe this is why oluchi left him in the beginning it wasn't because he was broke or anything it was probably because he's a cold-hearted sob you know because to anyway you know what just done with that i i wasn't sure why that happened why that was a choice i mean i i support i respect the right or i am here for somebody saying hey if you decide to keep a child away from me i don't want to have anything to do with that child just make it believable okay. and then my final uh as far as story that is my biggest disappointment story wise was that the story between oluchi and bishop was unfinished that story was unfinished I, what I thought was going to happen, the story that they had promised us with all the setup between them, making them housemaids, him always like kind of not, it was almost like he cuddled her, not cuddle, like cuddled. What's the difference between the U and the O pronunciation of cuddled, cuddled? I don't know what it is, but he, the O one, he cuddled her, you know, he never like called her out or whatever. It was almost like Loki, he had a massive crush on her right and then finally he threw his own girlfriend out on top of her matter so why didn't they end that story i thought it was going to be a sweet story between uh a story of her realizing that this is a guy who has always known who she was always known her but never judged her you know and now they come together i don't know maybe that's the romantic in me the cinematography i've already said that there were certain like shots that i really liked and in general it wasn't bad however there were so many emotional bits that weren't filmed for like impact and that took away from the story and then the scene where the first time oluchi went missing and then they went looking for her where is she where i don't know what that song was also but those shaking touches i had to actually zero in on a particular person to see if there was any sense to the movement of the touch i was like oh wait they're just using these touches to to set the scene to like make it musical like crisscrossing lights or whatever 
it. It was a choice. Now, the final aspect, which according to the makers of this film, is probably the most important to them and to their vision of this film, which is the music slash the musical aspect of it. This movie would have been fine without the musical. Let me just start there. I've never watched like a good musical before and thought, oh, this musical is separate from this film. But in this case, I felt like they could have existed completely independent of each other. This movie would have survived very well. In fact, it would have thrived. This musical was a thing around its neck. <laughs> That's what this musical was, okay? Like, it did, it, Nancy singing, I'm sure, I think she's, I don't know if she's a singer. Does she have a career as a musician? I don't know, but I didn't like her singing here. The directing of the musical bits, I don't know if I saw somewhere that Coyote Kasum is a musical, music video director. If he is, then he's not a very good one. <laughs> Sorry, there's not a way to say it. Because the music was mid, okay? It was giving basic. Like, the actual music itself was not, you know, sweet. In fact, when I saw got to the end and they had the temerity to say the story does not end here, listen to the album, I was like, not on your life. Why? Why should I listen to this album? There's nothing to listen to. This music and, like, the, the songs, the words, the lyrics and everything, it did not move the plot forward in any way. It did not add to the story. A final thing for me was just again as far as the musical aspect but also in general i think if you say you're doing a musical listen you have to leave your blood on the floor you have to leave your blood there you cannot just casually in, in, inject music here and there and then beat your chest and brag that you've done a musical you know like just i didn't i didn't see the effort i didn't see forget that this was don't call it a music just leave it as a drama that they sang sometimes they will come inside and sing i did like the rap though but i think that if I, I feel like Coyote could have really, really put his heart into this and done an excellent job. I don't know why they decided to just be mediocre. Like, I feel like they, they knew what to do. They just couldn't be bothered. And so, in conclusion, I'm just going to say that I know what the story of this movie was, but I don't know what the heart of this movie was, right? I didn't know what, it, what was its character. I'm not sure why I was supposed to care. I didn't particularly care about Oluchi or her redemption arc which was what this story was about if anything sorry the only person i cared about really in this movie was the child ihunaya but i was not worried about her there were no stakes in that way that oh if things didn't go well for her as far as whatever this story was she would not be okay i knew that she was going to be okay so i didn't really care in the end this movie sometimes it felt like a collection of skits sometimes it felt like an a, an extended episode of a tv show at the 35 minute mark this story had not even started this movie had not even started they were still trying to do character development and everything that was just so problematic for me in general also i wish that there had been more Igbo spoken in this movie we had like enugu and it would have been nice to whenever like oluchi was speaking with her father uh humphrey slash papa oluchi or when um like oluchi was speaking with auntie Nwaka or i don't know just i wish i had seen more uh Igbo spoken among the Igbo speaking characters I'd like to finish on a positive note though to say that I don't know if it's exactly positive But let me just say this that I always appreciate an attempt just do it well But just for even thinking to do it for being bold and sometimes boldness is not a good thing But even just saying you would do it. I appreciate that attempt even when it's not a really a very good one Let me just leave it at that. Do I recommend this movie? Sure for no particular reason But just you know, let it not be said that you did not watch Obaram. That was a musical drama So I recommend I scored this movie a 5 out of 10 and honestly I think that this is like being super generous because there's so much more that I did not like than that I liked. Ha, I got it right today. <laughs> I bungled it the last time I was trying to say that. Okay, so thank you so much for being here with me. If you enjoyed this review, please do all the things. Like, share, subscribe, hit the If you like my videos, actually, please hit the notification bell so that you can uh, always know when I post a new video. Also, please check out my other videos uh, on the channel. And most importantly to me, comment, please. I want us to talk about the review. I want us to talk about the movie. I want to hear you your thoughts and let it not just be my voice all the time all the time all right guys thank you you go ahead now and have a wonderful rest of your week thank you oh i forgot what do i always say remember you have the right to an incredible viewing experience so never settle <laughs> thank you